Yo, the name is Alper, and today we are going to be analyzing my tournament final games versus Ray, also known as Asha Bloy. And in this series, it's a best of three, uh, meaning, you know, you start with a coin toss, you're going to have to play both factions after each game, you switch factions. And yeah, in a best of three format, so uh, if it comes to ace game, the victory point leader is then the decider for faction in game three. And since we are in game one here, uh, I am starting off as the Ver here in the northeast on this lovely custom map Crossroads, which is uh, handily been remade, um, literally by hand, by White Flash, uh, who has created the Co-1 and the Co-2 versions of this map. So, very cool map, definitely my favorite map uh, so far in the game. Um, but uh, I, I think, you know, it's had some reworks the past week and uh, I don't know, I, I like it very much, but I think in the Co3 pacing, especially with like how balance works right now, it is extremely snowball uh, which is, you know, what you're going to see. Um, for this game, I, I knew what my opponent was doing, he's going to go Pathfinder into Sniper, uh, so I had some, uh, some thoughts on how to deal with this, um, which you, we're going to see. So yeah, uh, let's jump. We are running at 1.5 speed to uh, speed things up. But yeah, you can see here uh, I'm dropping, already making my first mistake here. Uh, I, My code 2 brain was uh, spooking me here, so I actually dropped here, which is actually the fuel point in code 2. Uh, so off the bat, I'm making a mistake. I should have dropped here. Uh, slim mistake, still very annoying. I just immediately walk over here. It doesn't really impact much, but if you sent this starting unit here, it would have been quite awkward for me. Uh, fortunately that didn't happen, uh, so I could still get my sandbag up, and you know, this is, in general, this is just very annoying for allies to deal with, uh, and I think you'll see here later on what Ash does is so smart, uh, he sees my unit, he has obviously been practicing, and then he just goes for the cutoff, which is going to be the weak link, right, and it's just such a good play, it's so subtle, but it's such a good play, uh, and yeah, you, you can already see here, he of course spots the plane, you know, uh, how do I get out of, there we go. And then he does uh, the flare as well, you can see this in the sky. So he, he knows where my units are, uh, since I was expecting a sniper, you know, you backpedal a, a bit here, you don't want to take, uh, you don't want to lose models and manpower for no reason, so, you know, I was going to hide here. Uh, and you know, if he caps, you can kind of, you know, you've got cover here, cover here. If he pulls back, this cover is basically useless in this position, and this cover is quite far away. Uh, so, yeah, I think in general, this is uh, probably the best start you can do as well on this map. Uh, I mean, this is, you can go left side, but I feel like this cutoff is impossible to hold with this opener. Uh, but equally, which I didn't anticipate, is this cutoff is equally uh, difficult to. Uh, to hold. So yeah, I think it was a really good game. I mean, game one and two kind of just disappears because it's US Ver, and I think, especially after those two games, I think that matchup is impossible for Ver. So yeah, I, I think Ver in general has uh, two approaches uh, when you go Luftwaffe. Uh, if we take a look at the tree here, you can either go straight for the, the Verbal Wind. Uh, you're always going to be picking up this because it's free, but you can go for the Verbal Wind, or you can go for the, 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 the Falchum Jaeger. Um, in this game, I, you know, usually you shouldn't be setting up your mind for anything here, but you should be picking what works and what you need. Uh, in this game, I decided to greed for the verbal, um, because it was really my only ch shot to get in the game. You will see here that the opening is extremely bad for me. Um, but yeah, moving on, you can see here he spots my units, he knows where they are. Uh, meanwhile, I'm getting some units onto the left side of the map here. But yeah, you can see me here, I'm already queuing up a sniper. Uh, I do cancel this, and uh, my thought process was here, he's going to pick sniper. I don't know exactly where in the build uh, he picks it up. Uh, I haven't played and I haven't seen his games, so I actually had no idea. Uh, so I kept just cancelling this and keeping it in the queue in case I see the sniper. Uh, plan was just have it on the field uh, once it reveals. Uh, but yeah, here you see, you know, he can see that this is undefended, and unfortunately I put green cover here. And this is just an excellent position for him, because it cuts off all of my resources. Um, and I'm just forced to charge this and try to pull him away, uh, which doesn't work with the units I have. Uh, so yeah, just great play from him. Uh, I think in hindsight it would have been better if I just, you know, tried to consolidate and just hold this area. Uh, so these units should probably have been dropped here as well, just to hold, that way I actually have some income. 
Uh, instead, I, I just get completely wrecked here, uh, which you're about to see. So yeah, here we go. I'm gonna charge straight in, and you can see here, you know, he pops behind green cover, and yeah, this is this is just terrible for me. Uh, I don't have much choice though. I just need to get through, and I can't. So uh, yeah, great rifle nade from him. I tried to uh, dodge. I was thinking he put it on the retreat path. Uh, but he didn't and it almost got him a free wipe there so excellent play from him just so well executed and I I, I didn't think about this possibility whatsoever and there you go you get the sniper revealed so I'm gonna queue up the sniper for the fifth time this game um, just to make sure I have it right for the counter sniper but yeah already you also have another spike here for US you get the the paratroopers which is a very strong squad uh, meanwhile, I'm forced to just try to, to counter the sniper here, right? So uh, I have from the start just a worse composition compared to his four pathfinders And then I get a counter sniper to stop stop his sniper and then he gets a paratrooper on top of this So he already has quite a bit more uh, in terms of field presence here field Yeah, uh, of course, I, he revealed his sniper here a uh, tiny bit earlier uh, and I get into a counter sniper position uh, I was sensing that he might actually pull away here, so I really wanted to try to bait him to shoot, which is the plan, just get the counter sniper off and then try to get back, but unfortunately I do reveal, and this is something in Ko3, I played very little with snipers in Ko3, uh, so my Ko2 brain just kicked in and I thought, you know, this travel distance is easily managed without getting revealed in Ko2, um, but in Ko3 you, you can't walk this distance without getting revealed. And uh, the fact that I get revealed here, I think is game losing on the spot. Uh, like all of the chances kind of goes into the dirt here, which is very unfortunate. Um, but I simply hadn't played enough with Sniper in this in this game. Uh, and I thought it would act like Code 2, uh, which you'll see here as I try to move up to this, this location. It reveals. So now he knows there's a Sniper. And I'm not going to be able to get the the counter sniper off anymore. And of course research. that rifle nade, you know, he knows, he knows. I don't know why I'm staying, I think I can get back there. Our sniper has and I can't, and the sniper dies. So again, this was just me thinking this is Ko2. Uh, when it's not Ko2, it's Ko3. Uh, so I, I think in general this is um, very unfortunate, because I wasn't aware. Uh, I didn't even know actually that this got revealed the first time, because this, the game doesn't really tell you. Uh, when the units gets cloaked, um, like it's very hard to tell when it gets cloaked or not. In Koa 2 I would say it's obvious, especially if you've played even like 50 hours. In this game it's actually really hard um, to tell when they're, they're revealed or not. And this is something you're going to see like throughout all of the games I would say. Uh, where the, the sniper is like, you know, the, they are so important because they're so busted. But the mechanic doesn't really feel finished. Um, as it's like impossible to tell when they are revealed. Uh, you're gonna see here uh, once he gets in cover. So he's revealed now. And there you go. This is the difference. So when you're when you're fighting multiple engagements, this is just hard to tell. It's very hard to tell. So yeah, small cloak duration when you're outside of cover and hard to tell when they're actually covered. Like we have so many cool icons, right? Uh, for uh, for stuff like uh, combat bonuses, but why isn't there like a camo icon? That would make things so much easier, I think. So yeah, this definitely doesn't really feel finished on the game's part, uh, in my opinion. And I definitely think they should expand on this. I also tested a bit earlier. Plane abilities are extremely inconsistent when they reveal snipers. Uh, so there are recon planes that don't really reveal snipers unless they are on top of them. And because of uh, the meta right now, which Pretty much all factions have some sort of plane ability. There's only like one fifth of them that actually reveals camo units. Uh, so I don't know. It, it's it's a strange circumstance, uh, and unfortunately they are so strong right now that you're kind of forced to build them, even though you know they're not really. They're not. It doesn't feel like finished, you know, uh, gameplay wise. So yeah, unlucky. I think I've already lost this game uh, since this is a tournament finals. I'm gonna pedal in for a bit longer and just try to cope. Uh, so here you'll just see me blobbing and get killed over and over. Um, I think there are some some is interesting things left to point out just to show how strong the sniper is. So we're gonna watch a bit longer. We are down to 300 points. So to show the sniper's strength, 
Um, you can see here, I, I drop a model, a sniper killed a model of this squad over here. Uh, so I'm down to two models and I retreat at about half HP. But yeah, at this stage I would say there's really no units in the game that can kill this unit on retreat. Except for maybe a 250 assault gun that should hit about, you know, six minutes if it follows all the way back to base. But look how, look how, how, like, easy it looks with the sniper. And just to show, you know, the lethality of this unit uh, that hits at like minutes three and that has huge vision radius range. Uh, just to show the lethality here. I swear, even if you have five riflemen on this retreat path, this would probably have lived. There was a sniper! Where the fuck was he? So yeah, um, there you can see kind of the, the issue with this matchup, right? You have four model squads and this unit exists for US and it's extremely strong um, and there isn't much you can do it I think except for building a sniper of your own um, which is what I tried this game um, but I'm, I fucked up and I revealed my unit and that was definitely the, uh, the, the losing uh, um, moment I think. So yeah, GG, let's head into game two where I will be playing as the US. But yeah, here we are in game two. This time around, I am playing as the US. And as you will notice, um, I'm queuing up scouts. And that's because I'm going to be doing the exact same thing. I'm going to go Pathfinders and I'm going to go into Sniper um, because my opponent is playing very. Um, he does a slightly different approach, though all, I think quite similar still. Uh, Actually, he does the exact same approach. Who, who am I kidding? Um, because I also immediately build tier 1 and then I get the sniper, right? Um, but he actually builds it straight off the bat, probably expecting a sniper. He just knows I'm going to go a sniper probably, so... Uh, he is aware, just like I was, but I was kind of... I was doubting. I didn't want to build a sniper if Asha didn't build a sniper. So, uh, yeah, I guess he is a bit more committed to it than I am. Um, yeah, um, so yeah, of course it's still the same map, we have to switch sides, uh, everything is basically a straight up mirrored here, I'm in Asha's shoes and Asha is in my shoes, right? Yeah, again, um, I'm just actually just going to mimic Asha's playstyle, which is like avoiding your opponent's units and try to like outcap until you get the sniper, like once you get the sniper that's when you start winning every single engagement, right? Uh, so that's what you want to do. Uh, you want to get the sniper out. Until then, uh, use the flares to avoid engagements and just try to get some free captures that are undefended. And then you can also, of course, pop the smoke, right? Uh, to, to stay or to harass resources. So you want to pop the flare. If it's undefended, go in, just like Asha did. Uh, I think that's just very much 101 how you play this opening two minutes uh, until the sniper is out. Uh, definitely. You can see him here. I actually walk head first into him. Um, but I just immediately pull back, toss in a player, and if he ever leaves this point, I can then go in and capture it. Uh, or if he stays there, then I just go somewhere else, right, on the map. Um, so yeah, that's... Ready for duty. I, I'm, I'm pretty certain this is one-on-one -on -one how you play this matchup. Um, then, there you go, there you see the sniper from Asha. Uh, very interesting build order. Again, he was more committed to the sniper than I was. Um, he probably knows it's coming. Um, so yeah, I, I, I was a bit surprised that he immediately built it, but again, they are so strong, so I, I, I think they are kind of go-to units at this point. Um, so yeah, nothing much going on, we finally have the sniper in the queue, uh, so we are gonna start playing a bit more aggressive eventually, uh, until then we're basically just going to go hide, and uh, like a bear, you know, waiting uh, during the winter. Uh, we're just going to like stay outside of line of sight, outside of, uh, you know, hibernation. That's what I'm talking about, hibernation. We're gonna go to hibernation until the sniper hits, um, because that's our big power spike. And yeah, sniper is heading out, and we're gonna we see him here capping, so we're gonna give him a few volleys. You can see how much damage they're dealing, it's some very nice damage right there. Um, in the meantime, you know, still avoid engagements. There you go. Sniper is on the field. Now I would like to point out there is basically two schools, schools of thought when it comes to counter sniper. Uh, when you're building a sniper into a sniper. Um, which are quite different. The, the first point, uh, school is to uh, keep your sniper cloaked and then try to get the kill on the sniper. And the other school is basically as to keep it firing and to make sure you're actually not losing any manpower, right? Because you're bleeding both players uh, equally. 
Um, I think those are the, the major like two different schools. In game one, you could see I, I was greedy. I wanted to get that counter sniper. In call three, I can't really. I don't really think you can do that. The optimal way has to go fair and square and bleed each other equally. Um, because the, the fire rate is so insane. Like if you're not firing using your sniper, you're losing so much manpower so quick, right? In Call of Duty, like the fire rate wasn't that fast. Um, so I really think the way to do it is what Asha did and just reveal and keep firing. And that's how I'm going to be playing this matchup too. I'm just going to ignore his sniper for the majority of it and just keep firing and keep bleeding him as much as he's bleeding me. And that way, you know, they don't impact the game as much. I think that's the, the best school, really, in Koa 3. In Koa 2, it's way more viable to go for the counter sniper, like where you actually kill his sniper. Um, because the fire rate isn't that big, so you can kind of afford to wait and be patient. But also, you can actually uh, skip cover, right? You can move across this distance without actually decloaking, making it a lot easier to get close without getting spotted, right? We did know his sniper was over here, so we're going to smoke this off and go for the uh, the cutoff here. My pathfinders are coming Bad in in a second, uh, so drop. I knew I would have a big spike here, just like Asha did game one, um, where you basically just have more units than your opponent, um, which is, you know, why you do this push at this timing, right? You play hibernation game until you have your power spike, and when you have your power spike, that's when you want to go aggressive, so... That is basically what's going on here. Yeah, Asha knocks about the sniper now. Um, shooting at the rock for some reason. And yeah, just massive push here or assault on the cutoff. Uh, Asha cleverly does have this one point capturing who's going to go capture the east, which I think is quite clever. Um, instead of, you know, trying to hold this, because you, as very you just can't hold this. Like, you, you don't have enough units to hold this, this aggression, as very. Um, and again, as we mentioned earlier, this map is extremely snowball-y. Uh, if you're on your base and you lose your cutoff, you're gonna have very little resources unless you have the other points, right? On the other side, which is harder to cut off. But again, these are very weak points, like they're very easy to assault. So while I do like the map, and I don't think this is a map fault, I think more uh, it's a faction balance issue where some of the factions are extremely powerful in the early game for some reason. And like you see here, I just have more units and they are individually stronger units than my opponent. So really tough here for Ver to actually do anything other than bleed points uh, until you get some more units out and just... Yeah, I, I really don't know how to play this approach as Ver, uh, other than try to mitigate the bleed from the US sniper by shooting with your own sniper. So yeah, we're at the five minute mark. I have... Uh, I can't see my opponent's resources here, but I would argue that it's probably less than half of mine and it's just getting worse as i'm capping up the sides with the the pathfinders which have ca faster capping speed right um so yeah i can of course see him coming here i got the flare uh, i did spot his uh, sniper uh, going this direction so i'm actually moving up for a counter sniper here but again since this is code 3 and not code 2 the sniper is immediately revealed crossing this cover to this cover meaning you can't really cross cover uh I, this Stone actually doesn't provide any cover at all, so that's not an option. Um, so you actually can't like go for a counter sniper really in this game because they just get revealed. Um, which you know I actually didn't know before going into this tournament. I had simply played too little with snipers. Um, I, I knew they were broken and I had the build vaguely in my mind. And that's about it. Uh, so Asha was definitely way more prepared and he obviously knew that there, there's no point in trying to attempt any counter snipes. So yeah, again, you can see him here trying to get his cutoff back, and again he fails, he doesn't have enough units, um, and they are again individually weaker. Um, you know, just hopeless call here. I think I even could have went for the, the, the snipe and killed his squad here maybe. Um, but I didn't, because I, I was greedy again, I wanted the counter snipe. So yeah, uh, Quad is now out. Uh, I did pick this one up instead of the other one, which is actually a major mistake. Um, this one is just straight up cheaper. Um, this one costs uh, less manpower uh, and less fuel, but it's such a small margin. Meanwhile, the munitions upgrade is actually quite expensive at 75 munitions. So straight up misplay from me here. Um, I should have uh, picked this one up 
uh, instead of doing it this this way and this is of course an advantage of picking mechanized train and you want mechanized with this build um, because mechanized makes sure you win the late game like straight up you're probably going to win the late game with mechanized because of how strong the 76 millimeter sherman are and you know this build in the opening ver can't do anything so you have stronger early game and arguably stronger late game um which is you know straight up my alley in this match and yeah since he knew about my sniper here he just face checked it with a pioneer didn't get the wipe though and here comes my quad and uh yeah he has nothing he's getting looked off now to get out some uh some um Jaegers, but that's still going to be quite weak or quite late. I don't even know if he has enough munitions for them to be honest. Um, so yeah, yes, enormous field presence, no income for my opponent, and he is very much stuck here with very few options. He does attempt this, I'll give him credit for this. This is probably his best attempt or chance of winning this, and it all stacks on me not seeing a three second timer uh, which is quite easy to do uh, but yeah he, he did attempt this very nice play uh, unfortunately i didn't spot it meaning you know the the m3 uh, gets out of there for free and it costs him munitions that he he really can't afford right i mean he probably has no income uh, so good attempt but not good enough Yeah, he did have this squad we were talking about earlier when I uh, assaulted the cutoff. And yeah, again, he has no answer to this M3. Um, and meanwhile, I just keep stalling with the smokes. That's another thing you can do with the pathfinders. And yeah. Game continues. does reveal his sniper here so i'm gonna go in for a dive i was actually surprised of again the sniper insane lethality and um, but also durability it actually takes quite a few bursts for the m3 to kill it and this isn't the only light vehicle that struggles with killing snipers pretty much all of the light vehicles take forever to kill a sniper especially when they click a retreat button it's a very safe unit to build uh because it's just it's durable and it's more lethal than any of its previous iterations in the other games of the franchise. Um, as you can see here, I'm charging it down. I'm barely making a dent. Uh, and yeah. This is a trade for me. But again, I, I think this is pretty fine trade for me. Uh, because I'm just so far ahead, right? He, I do almost lose my sniper because I miss micro during this uh, dive. Um, but I realized, you know, if I retreat here, I'm gonna get this retreat path, which means it's dead um, because this guy is just gonna shoot while uh, while my sniper try to tries to get around this path, right? Uh, so I manually make sure I get around this corner, which was what I was banking on, and it worked. I got lucky. The the final bullet did not connect. Um, so yeah, I can escape here with... Uh, can I select and see HP? Yeah, 6 HP. Pretty pog. Uh, so yeah, winning player gets rewarded by RNG. That's usually how the co-franchise works. And yeah, quite one-sided. Uh, but uh, in a few seconds you'll spot my opponent doing something extremely smart. Um, which I just completely ignored. And I think that cost me the series. So yeah, he rebuilds the sniper here. Uh, of course, again, it's his only chance to beat my sniper is to bleed me equally. And yeah, I do a full retreat here, which is such a huge mistake. I really regret this in hindsight. Thing is, I leave him, leave it open for him to capture the VPs. And I didn't bleed a single VP off of Asha in game one. And he is still at 500. And Ace game gets decided by the VP lead, and the VP slice open, and he actually bleeds me of quite a few points here. Like, I just straight up ignore the VPs, and that means he's gonna get faction pick in game 3, and game 3 is still on the same map. And yeah, US is looking quite dominant here, isn't it? Uh, so yeah, very unlucky, uh, not even unlucky, just unskillful, and yeah, I, I neglected this. I was thinking I'm winning, I'm happy, I'm a happy little camper. Uh, you know, I rushed out my Sherman, I'm happy, and I didn't deny the, the fuel you see on Summoner. 
standing one foot outside. Um, so yeah, we just make a suicide charge. I'm happy, clueless, that I'm losing the match or the series. Of course, using this, making my units uh, invincible, which is insanely strong, by the way. Uh, again, another benefit of this commander. And yeah, I'm just... I'm not worried at all here. I'm just gonna sit in his base. And he drops the... Uh, the raketten, I would like to call it, but it's not called a raketten, it's a recoilless something, recoilless LG40. Uh, not to be confused with uh, Life's Good, the, I want to say, South, South Korean uh, company. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's quite fruitless going here. He's just straight up losing. Uh, but again, he bled me of uh, a couple of VPs, and uh, that's game deciding. Um, which is uh, a bit unfortunate, I think. Uh, but it's also my brain not comprehending uh, the poetry. Uh, so he calls it here, but he gets 13 VPs off me. And that means he gets faction uh, pick in, um, in our final game. So let's take a look at that. So here we are in game three. And of course, Asha had the victory point lead, meaning he gets the faction pick. And of course, with the very dominant display here of USF, he goes USF. Fair play, I would do the exact same thing if I had VP lead. Unfortunately, I didn't. I wonder what would happen if we were both at 500 VPs. I have literally no idea who decides what faction. Is that another coin toss? Uh, I don't think Moss League rules has had any rules for that because I can't recall ever there being such an imbalance in, in the CO2 history where one matchup seems to be unbeatable. But that definitely was my impression after my games versus Asha today. And sure, in my screams, I've I've seen I've sensed the USF sniper build is strong, but man, it felt really unbeatable versus Asha's Pathfinder. But yeah, uh, I decided here to throw a curveball. Now I knew Asha was well practiced versus Ver. That was very obvious from my first game. Uh, so I decided to go Dak here, and I've actually quite probably played Dak the most, I would say, especially in this patch. Uh, with the, the car armata and everything. Um, so yeah, I decided to throw him a curveball. I did look up a couple days ago uh, Asha's post-match history. Uh, and I know he has been practicing a lot with PFC, who has been playing Dak. So maybe he guessed that I would pick Dak uh, in my first game. But I, since I went with Ver, you know, uh, I just decided I want to try something different here. I didn't know on the spot, I would have to do a lot of testing, right, to, to check how to actually beat that USF sniper opener, because obviously the, the Ver sniper strat I did at the start didn't work, right? Uh, so I would have to go back to theory, theory crafting, and you can't really do it in a tournament. So I decided to go Dak here, and uh, sniper is way worse versus Dak because of all the light vehicles, um, and you know, because in general your infantry isn't really as important, especially not with the Kara Armata build, where your main infantry is going to be pioneers, right? You you really don't care about those fellas. And yeah, my opponent was well practiced versus this as well. He goes with a completely different build uh, um, without a sniper, uh, but instead opting in to go for riflemen together with pathfinders. I think that was well, quite clever. It's something I've been, I want to say doing something similar, but not quite. I've been, uh, I was watching Kimbo's games a couple days ago. And what you do is you build something insane like four rifles. Uh, and then you go for airborne and then you go for uh, infantry support center and then you equip all your rifles with bars and uh, You know you you get grab that forward uh, Reinforce or not forward reinforce but free reinforce for eight munitions, whatever And then you just keep zooming across the map suiciding your units literally playing Soviet strats Just throwing manpower at your opponent and you do it at positions where your opponent is just forced to to defend and lose manpower since you are reinforcing for free. Um, and yeah, that's really powerful. And that's actually a, a similar strat here that Asha did, but he also went some uh, Pathfinders to start it off with, uh, which I think is uh, an interesting inclusion. Um, but it's definitely something I've not seen before. Usually just, usually what I've seen and what I've, me myself has played is just pure rifles. Uh, so yeah, cool. Uh, there's still some uh, adaptions going on, uh, which is nice. Now, a couple days ago, uh, I uh, uploaded and talked a lot about uh, the four pioneer opener for DAC, um, but I have noticed that it struggles quite a bit versus stuff such as the weasel or a 4x4 or a, or a dingo. And I do think this bike really just helps you in those matchups um, because, you know, a pioneer 
or even two panniers, you're gonna struggle a bit versus a light vehicle. But with the bike, you, you can still sort of trade favorably in terms of damage. Uh, even though the DAC loses one, one on one, you know, you got the pioneers to follow it up. And I think this is a better build for that sort of thing. So you just add the bike on top of the, the four pioneers, right? Uh, which is definitely, uh, I think, uh, a decent ad adaptation to this build. Uh, otherwise, it's basically the same as before. You rush out the eight red, uh, which is the goal, and then you spam Karamata with your armory upgrades. Yeah, here, uh, this was just a huge mistake by me. I've been practicing quite a bit with this, and they usually beat scouts very handily, like by a pretty big margin, if you just get up in their face. Um, but because this is a Pathfinder, it stood no chance, and I was a bit surprised here. Um, I don't know, maybe it's an RNG thing as well. This is quite poorly armored, right? But I don't know, I got this completely demolished there, which is a bit unlucky, I think. But also, I had no idea the Pathfinder did so much better than the Scout. Um, yeah, he gets some really good engagements here. I'm just immediately forced off, right? 1v2, um, bike is off to repairs. And yeah, I'm just chilling currently in the center with my pioneers. Uh, of course, trying to reach these fuel points. Uh, fuel is all you want to focus as that, really. Uh, your munitions don't really matter as much, especially not with this build. You want to get that fuel to get that 8 red out, um, because the 8 red is really insane. Once you get the 8 red out, you can kind of ignore fuel, because the, the Karo is extremely cheap in fuel, and armory doesn't require any fuel. If you're losing, going for the uh, the Martyr also is like zero fuel, it's like 25 or something, like that's just misc, right? You don't have to focus fuel on anything. Um, so yeah, focus fuel at the start, and once you get the 8 right out, you can kind of ignore it. Um, I think would be the go-to. But yeah, I'm just taking bad engagements across the map. Again, here I get very close to actually losing my bike, which was just poor micro. Um, but yeah, the US, you know, has so many units and they're all individually really strong. And in my games, I've never really struggled with this build as much. Um, but yeah, I, in my games, I have really not played enough versus as strong players as Asha, I think. Um, so I was taken a bit back by this. Um, but yeah, we were coping on, um, but the fuel income here is really bad, uh, as you can see. Uh, I only had this point connected, the rest has been connected for a very short time, and this is delaying my a thread quite a bit, so I'm gonna have to do some adaptation here um, to what I usually do, uh, which is already a very bad sign. Uh, so the follow-up to this build is quite simple, you go for the Assault Grants, and uh, the Assault Grants are extremely strong, and they are extremely wipey, like this is a huge power spike, and you're immediately going to see me here, I'm just going to pick up a squad wipe. Uh, people have yet, people have, after two weeks, still not learned that that gets a huge uh, spike at the 6 minute mark. And you want to pay attention as allies playing versus Dak. This is like the most important thing you want to look at, the 6 minute mark, and the 12 minute mark, and the 18 minute mark. They're gonna have a power spike, now if you have a light vehicle out, Look for the, the six minute mark, because then you're probably going to be facing Panzer Jaegers. If, if if you don't have a light vehicle out, then you probably don't want to have low HP squads capping at the edges of the map, because they are going to get run down so fast, uh, which is exactly what happens. Um, so yeah, that's I think a very good thing just to learn about this matchup is watch out for that six minute, because the six minute there is a spike happening, and uh, you want to be careful. Here I of course charge. Um, with the, the Agrons, I pumped them out, I was fearing a uh, a snare, so I, I just kept the 250 close by to, you know, get the combined arms bonus, uh, which I get on my squads, and I was also thinking, you know, if he tries to snare, he's gonna close in, and then he's gonna get even closer, hugging my Agrons, you know, this is just great for my unit. Uh, it might look really bad because it's 1v3, uh, but you're gonna see here that the Agron DPS is very strong. Uh, so this is like the perfect engagement for Dak really. And these are the engagements you want to look for, and they can be really hard to get. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is of course just good. I still, it looks really bad. And then it just changes in like a heartbeat.
So yeah, I'm getting low here. I want to keep them on the field though. So I jump in. But of course, he has so many units, right? There's units everywhere. And uh, I can't really keep up with my uh, Pioneer opening here. Especially since, where is the Atrad, right? We're at 7 min 30. And there is no Atrad. Uh, and that's just due to my shitty fuel control. I'm about 40 fuel off here, if this is my POV, which I think it is. And yeah, I have to adapt here. I, I do end up teching. But... I really shouldn't have teched in hindsight. I think I should have gone for uh, fire support elements. And that's simply to unlock the armory. Because I need the armory upgrades for the Dekar Armata. So what I should have done is I should have gone uh, tier 1.5 here. Simply because it's slightly cheaper than going up. Um, of course this means I can't get the martyr out. But at this point I need to, to find something that keeps me in the game. Because this is a snowball build, right? So I gotta adapt, I gotta stop this bleed. Uh, both in terms of victory points and resources. So I really should have gone for tier 1.5 here. Uh, and just get those Karos out. Instead, you know, because this also unlocks uh, level 2 in the armory. Which is definitely what I need here. Um, so yeah, real struggle. Um, Pathfinder rifle nades my machine guns. Keep it together. Enemy forces have kept at the victory point. Yeah, minor mistake here. I actually drag selected. For some reason, this squad didn't get selected. I guess I missed him. Um, so yeah, he took some damage there, almost getting wiped, which was uh, quite bad. Quite bad indeed. And yeah, we're on pure repair duty now, of course. Um, since I'm not going healing with this, you want to repair, and then you can use the med station, right? Which uh, heals your units, which is just a very nice combo, right? Uh, you get a lot of... You save a lot of resources using the 250 for uh, a medic roll. Um, here again this is just bad i was in the in the 250 right i wanted to drive it out but because the reverse is on the same hotkey as the agren somehow they got out and retreated instead because you can retreat from uh, from garrisons just like you can retreat from units so yeah this just you know it's such a tempo loss again because now i need to get back pick up the agren it's just annoying yeah, we just hit four CPs, which means we got the Karo, but again, my decision here to take up is just so bad, right? I should have gotten this out, and then I should have gone for a tier 1.5. The fact that I got this structure, just, you know, it kills the tempo so hard with this build, and tempo is really all you got. You, you need to hit your, your timing on your, on your power spikes. If you don't, you know, you're playing a losing battle, and your opponent is just, his snowball is going to get so much worse, right? Uh, so while I could have a, a Karo out here, I could actually almost have two Karos out, because this thing is 55 fuel uh, for, you know, a fucking tent. Um, so, you know, 55 plus 11, that's 60. These are 45 apiece, so, you know, that's two thirds to, uh, to two Karos, right? Uh, so, yeah, unlucky. Um, but also, major misplay. That was too close! And, yeah, again, uh, you can see the bet one here. Taking increased damage, and then you get the Agren on top of that. He's just melting. Look at that, just melting. I would have followed here, but I did actually spot the animation on the uh, on the sticky nades. So I just jump out, you know, get the combined arms bonus, just like the engagement before. This is how you want to play as Dak with the Agrens, and uh, yeah, he he just runs away here, right? Um, but yeah, uh, here you can also see I am now. Starting to adapt. I've been floating a lot of manpower here. Usually you want to go for the Atrad, which I didn't have fuel for. And then you want to instantly pick up the, the Karo uh, once you get CPs for that, which I didn't have fuel for. So my build is literally broken. Nothing is working. Um, and then you of course want to pick these two up. But because this is so late, this is gonna be so late, what I end up doing is I'm just ignoring all of this and I'm just gonna start spamming machine guns because machine guns is really the best unit I have access to here. I could have gone for more Agrans, but I was worried uh, about the fact that, you know, I'm not gonna have any map control. Uh, this is not a unit you, you know, you wanna cap with and such. So I was thinking we make a huge front line with machine guns and then we just let these guys cap, right? Uh, so that was my plan. Um, just to buy myself some time um, because I noticed 200 VPs, VPs drain fast. I need map control. How do you get map control? You spam machine guns. Um, so that's my goal here.
It's also going for a flank. He did see me go here. Pretty sure I turn around, but I get naded. Uh, so yeah, the battlefield is now gonna switch over to the right side. MG eats it like a pro, um, but there is a captain coming up here for a flank. Just so good play uh, from my opponent, such good pressure. He just keeps the pressure up at all times, right? Makes it tough. Um, really stay in the match. Um, I mean, 150 VPs now, it's raining quick. And I gotta get those VPs. So yeah, at this point I'm just bucket, ignore resources. We're just going to focus VPs from now on and then resources uh, back bot. Uh, that's pretty much what I'll be doing from now on. Uh, we don't also have a another call in here, and we're slightly, you know, now I even have packed of steel, and they still can't afford the Karo uh, because of the shitty map control, right? So, uh, yeah, Karo is close. But yeah, everything is quite grim. 130 VPs now, and yeah, I'm on uh, all out VP focus here. Uh, we also got this squad. Uh, I was thinking of going another Agran, but I was smelling the Sherman at this point. And I knew one Karo isn't enough to stop a Sherman. I also know I have no snares or any other ATs. I needed one AT unit at least, and I went with the, the Panzer Jaeger, which I think is my best option. Could argue an AT gun is an option, but AT gun is more if you're if you have time. I don't have time here. I need to be winning. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, this can at least stop a dive, right? An 80 gun can't really stop a dive either, because once it gets behind the arc, you're doomed. Um, so yeah, this was basically the plan here. And then we also start, of course, getting these uh, upgrades um, as the Car Armata spam begins. Um, and yeah, this is really my only way back into the, the game. It's a very thin thread, um, but it's, it is a way. And uh, even at this point, I, I sensed I could win this if I just reduce the VP lead. Like, I am aware he has the 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 um, turn your infantry into super soldiers ability, right? I'm aware he has that. I'm aware he can turn his infantry in invincible. So I need to save as much VPs as possible uh, just to buy time versus that. Because when that hits, uh, and he's going to keep hitting that, you know, I'm going to be forced off every single time. Unless I'm gonna bleed manpower for no reason um, and try to outbleed his duration, right? Which is probably not happening. Uh, but that's another reason why the MG spam is quite good. Because if I can pin him, if I can pin his units, they're not gonna be firing at me and he can keep reinforcing forever. But at least the MGs, you know, if I can pin him, I, I can actually maybe survive versus the, the, the drops. Um, and that was kind of what what I was going for. And yeah, here you can see the 80 squad, like, that's enough to make this engagement favorable for me. Of course he misses a couple shots there as well, which is nice, you know, makes me have to repair less, but still, um, it's a good thing. And yeah, we're just throwing bodies at the VPs all over the place. Uh, trying to save them. 70 points now, and you can see how fast they're draining. We are playing at 1.5 speed, but still. And yeah, here I have to decide we're gonna lock this shit down. And uh, yeah, we're gonna hold these two VPs for the all that matters. You know, if I drop any lower, it's over. Uh, because I, I he can just click that ability, and I'm probably gonna be pushed off right uh, so yeah, we have an MG wall, and uh, this is where we die, on this hill right here. Uh, and you know, I still think I have a chance here. Uh, even though I only have two points, VPs drain so much faster, you know. At, if I can keep this for 10 minutes, I think I've won uh, somewhere around there, 10-15 uh, minutes. And I think that's doable, I think that's doable. Uh, I actually think I could have won this from this position. Uh, so yeah, that was, this is what we're running with, and we're just gonna keep clicking this. I can get it about every two minutes with the, the current map control, if I, weapon info, if I can keep it, so uh, yeah. I think this is what we had to go with, and uh, we're gonna start getting these now. Uh, I already got this actually, I prioritized vehicle survival, I think this upgrade is better than this for the Kuros. 
to, to prioritize. You want both, but you want to prioritize this um, simply because it gives them an HP. And HP is so important because that puts them... It uh, means that it requires another hit shot to hit, right? It's the same thing why the T-3485 was so strong in Code, uh, code 2. Uh, one more shot to kill is very important. And, you know, even though they get, don't get the smoke, it's just very strong to get that extra hit. Uh, meanwhile, this increases their damage, I want to say, from 80 to 92, which really only matters versus the vehicles. Like, I've heard people tell me this matters versus the infantry, but I, I, I don't think it increases the AoE. I think it only increases the actual damage, which really shouldn't matter that much uh, versus infantry. But yeah, um, so yeah the, the rest of these, this game is basically just my opponent uh, shoving his fist. I do make a... This was really close, actually. Uh, I actually missed the killing blow on the Sherman here. I think it was a bit unlucky. I think I could have been more aggressive as well, but I really didn't want to lose any of my Karos. And I also knew one major, major advantage I have in this matchup is actually repair speeds. US has horrible repair speeds, and because of you have such many line infantry, getting those engineers can be quite expensive at this stage of the pain, uh, or, or this stage of the game. Uh, it's a pain at this stage of the game. Um, and, you know, rebuilding that instead of getting like another Sherman always feels extremely bad. Uh, so, again, I, I think this was really good, as you'll see here. Uh, I wish I could go to, down to like half speed. But we're just gonna pause instead because I'm lazy. Um, yeah. Uh, also, I, I know Jibber pointed this out to me after the game. Uh, had I gone for Tungsten here before, which I didn't, I prioritized vehicle, which probably saves this, by the way. This saves this for sure. Uh, but had I gone for Tungsten as well, this would have been dead. Like, that would have been enough damage. 80 to 92. Um, like, this would have been dead. Uh, so yeah, small little thing there. I also try to keep this guy in the fight, keep firing. Um, unfortunately he dies. I was hoping I could maybe make a trade here. Didn't turn out that way. Um, but you also know, notice here, I actually missed that shot. Uh, which would have been enough to kill it, because it only has 64 HP. Um, so yeah, tiny bit unlucky. Uh, it might not even have pen though, because the armor piercing round duration was off. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's worth diving this here, but I could maybe have tried here, but I mean, there's rifles and shit. I'm just gonna get snared and I'll probably lose it for nothing, right? And I was also thinking there might be a second Sherman at this point. Um, but yeah, um, very close here to getting a very big advantage, I think, if I kill the Sherman. And yeah, um, nothing much going on. I realize he likes this house. I'm... At some point I remove both of these houses, I just get annoyed. Uh, I was also thinking, you know, my MGs, they're better if there's no houses, so... Uh, fuck these houses, and, uh, you know... The 8 red spam continues, this is already repaired. Uh, Sherman has just begun repairing, because he had to rebuild the engineer. And... Yeah, still, uh, you know... Trying to get this point every now and then, forcing him to keep a squad to defend. And yeah, we're, we're holding the line. And uh, I was just fearing once he starts with the invincible infantry, uh, it's gonna be tough. Uh, so yeah, spam smoke. I was actually also considering uh, the uh, 254 for quite some time. Um, never really got it. Um, I don't know. I think in hindsight, this would have been quite useful if I could keep the, the Karos alive. Um, because this just gives you pretty much a permanent smoke, and if I put it like here, I'm also gonna get map hacks uh, around these areas, which I think would have been useful. Um, so yeah, I kind of wish, in hindsight, I would have gone for this earlier. Never did. I had too many manpower issues this game. But yeah, that would have been an option. I think it would have been kind of sick. Uh, so I could kind of perma smoke and uh, keep infantry on the point, uh, even if he goes for an all-in. Uh, invincible infantry strat and then I could put my MGs like further back so if it charges through you know they're just gonna pin everything right um, yeah I also almost lose this Karo here this is just brain fart complete um, yeah he uses the captain off map here which you can't see but the captain has an off map it's kind of useless I think but he uses it which is cool rare abilities to see and yeah 
This is such classic crossroads, you just... There's so many shot blockers in the center, which are vision blockers that you can use as basically targeting platforms. Uh, where if your opponent doesn't realize, you know, it's just free damage. And you can see us both using this quite a, quite a few times in this match. Um, but yeah, I think that's one one for this map in late game. You want to be using these shot blockers and then you basically just have a firing platform. Yeah, I go for another Pigren. Uh, again, I think I, I need them. I can't really agree with Assault Grunts anymore. Um, you know. So yeah, keep just greeting, staying on the point, not, not, not never really stepping back, just always keeping units on the point. Uh, <clears throat> I mean vision blockers, not shot blockers. And yeah, I do turn this little thing over here, and I kept it actually here throughout the entire game, and just... You know, whenever this gets undefended, this has an ability, uh, which gives you range. The binoculars, I guess. Um, which means you can actually, like, outview. You have a lot of vision with this. Um, so, yeah, I just went in and grabbed this whenever it was undefended. Just to, you know, keep quick, quicken up the bleed a tiny bit. Um, I, I think this was good play in general. Like, map has kind of big sides here, so you can kind of do that. Meanwhile, we're both just, I mean, I'm just suiciding my points and you see here the dropping, the ability is live. Uh, the only counter that I'm familiar with that works versus this is anti-air. And again, had I gone tier 1.5, the flak feeling actually would have been a very good pick here because it actually disables the drop. Um, so yeah, again. Huge mistake to get this structure because I never built anything from it and I think Like sure that the, the 254 would have been useful, but man having access to a unit that could block this That would be really strong um, So yeah, that was definitely my best option. I think so. Yeah, I think this is one of those rare games where tier 1.5 would have maybe one minute game instead of going tier 2 but yeah, uh, here comes the suicide push. My MGs are just gonna hold the line. I'm just gonna sit in this. But again, this is free for him. He can take as much damage as he wants. And it doesn't matter. And he, of course, grabs this point. And I lose. Um, but the little bike that could actually does nullify. So I'm not bleeding any VPs yet. But this duration of this ability is just insanely long again. So he just, he just keeps going, right? Um, I do end up marching in here again us. i just have to suicide on the vps i have a decent army but this ability i just have to go in and uh, hold the vps and i'm losing gonna lose a lot of units here uh, because i have no choice i have to go in uh, so maybe you know again if i had 50 more vps if i had 100 more vps uh, i could have maybe stayed in this match but the vp bleed man it's it's brutal and i just have to sit and take this i just have to Suicide my units basically just throwing them at him, you know um, Which is I don't know. It's a real shame. I think And yeah, I'm just I mean MG charging into the VP Atreus is trying to fucking force away these pesky Shermans, you know yeah, he's getting this now, so I need to get this, man. I can't go any lower. Again, this ability only costs 80 munitions. Uh, which means if he has a similar munitions income as me, which he probably does, the map seems to be split. He can do that once every two minutes. Uh, so yeah. Just, you know, I have to hold. And again, I can't leave. I need to get back in. He can, he's free to neutralize, but after neutralize, I need to get in here. He can't, this can't become red. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're just gonna try to smoke, stay on the VP, stay on the VP. We're losing units left and right, but we don't care. MG, this position I was quite happy with. But it also gets, it also gets smoked. Uh, I throw in the bike down here, you know, just to... I didn't even check if it was it was like hiding behind this right so I just threw it in there I was hoping it would be undefended it was defended unfortunately 
And again, you can see the ability is live again. The ability is live again. It's been two minutes since he used it last time. And uh, it's live again. Literally two munitions income and he can use it again. And yeah, I mean, I'm just throwing my units at the VP trying to stop this. Uh, but yeah, not enough units uh, versus his invincible uh, units. Yeah, here goes my repair units. And yeah, I can't really afford repeating here, so we're just gonna, you know, buy time, buy time. Actually, I should probably have stayed. I mean, he has three Shermans now. Yeah, this, this bad boy is still holding this. Yeah, he goes in, turning in the rest of my units, and yeah, that's game. But yeah, I think we had a pretty decent... Oh yeah, I, I mean, I'm still throwing in more units here and there, but at this point the game is definitely over. I lost my force, basically. Uh, just trying to, you know, buy some time. It's a finals after all, so you might as well attempt... Uh, you know, I've, I've had quite a few Hail Marys in the past. So you never really want to give up, especially not when it's a tournament finalize or finals. Yeah, this is desperate measures. Um, and yeah. VPs are now draining and I call it in a second. But yeah, a great series overall. Uh, like I mentioned, he was so well prepared in the Ver matchup. Uh, he got slightly more VPs in the first two games, meaning, yeah, he was a 13 VP difference. He got 13 more VPs, which gave him faction, faction pick in Ace game. And uh, it's a shame. I think, uh, I, I really don't know. I think Dak was my best uh, chance, but getting this was such a big mistake. Had I gone tier up 1.5, I probably would have increased my chances by quite a bit. Um, and that's only me to blame, really. Yeah, this was this tournament. Asha, of course, wins the entire thing, beating me 2-1. And GG's.